Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Notando and I make videos on construction, lifestyle and travel. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for tuning back in. Please don't forget to like the video. So on today's video, we are going to be talking about civil engineers transitioning into quanchi surveying. Now, the reason I'm making this video is because outside of the QSs and construction managers or aspiring QSs and aspiring construction managers, another big chunk of people who watch my channel are civil engineers. And... <laughs> And the question that I usually get from them is, can a civil engineer become a quantity surveyor? And if so, how can they do it? In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down whether or not you can and the steps in which you should take to do it. Quantity surveying and civil engineering are very interlinked. Um, they have a very similar foundation, which is working on site together. Usually when I am on site, I work closely with engineers. Depending on what's being built, the engineer will be most likely a civil engineer. They help the QS a lot when it comes to technical verification of work, whether or not if a payment is due and I talk to my civil engineer about, would you are you accepting this work? Should I go ahead and proceed with the payment or should it have taken them this long since they usually supervise the work on site as well? They can either give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down and that makes my forecasting, assessment, payment, and just applying the contract more accurate because we work so closely together. So from that um, perspective, a QS and a civil engineer have a very good bond or they can have a very good bond and they have very a very similar exposure to things. But yeah, before I go any further, let us discuss what the differences are between a quantity surveyor and a civil engineer. So uh, the focus of a civil engineer is design, construction and site work. And the focus of a quantity surveyor is cost estimation, contracts and financial management. The key skills needed for a civil engineer are structural analysis, project supervision and design. And the key skills needed for a quantity surveyors are BOQs, procurement, and risk assessments. Workplace in which both are uh, placed is that a civil engineer is usually on site and in the office. And to be honest, this is very similar to quantity surveyors. They usually offer space with some site visits, but some QSs are actually site based as well. And then lastly, the key documents which a civil engineer works with is drawings and specifications. And the key documents which a QS, is, a QS works with is BOQs, cost reports and contracts. So while engineers focus on the technical side, quantity surveyors ensure that projects stay within budget, contracts are managed properly and the financial risks are mitigated. So now that's out of the way, you can see that a civil engineer is very more technical compared to a quantity surveyor and the key differences between the two is that a, a quantity surveyor focuses mostly on the money. They focus on budgets, forecasting, procurement, estimation, a lot of the costs that come with the construction projects. They also then focus on contract administration which um, requires you to have exposure to the different contracts that depending on the project, obviously, what the project is working on. And they also focus on mitigating risks while civil engineers predominantly focus on either designing the job and also supervising that it's built according to the specification which it was designed with. So in order for you to then transition to the other side, you need to get yourself exposed to the things that a QS is exposed to. So your first step is to develop essential QS skills, which can be summarized as the following. Cost estimation and budgeting, bill of quantities preparation, contract administration, so under your FIDIC, NEC, JBCC, tendering and procurement, and also lastly, risk management. You'll need to master cost estimation, BOQ preparation, and contract administration. This means that the gap that you need to fill predominantly is money and budgeting, forecasting, um, estimation, bill preparation, 
and contract administration which is like learning all your contracts and stuff and to take it or to start small you can do this by self-studying you can literally find courses online that you can read up on find books about quantity surveying and what the principles of quantity surveying are you can also then if you go on linkedin there's always a lot of workshops that a lot of companies do um, because they get credit for this and sometimes these workshops are actually free so that's one step in which you can start your transition from civil engineering to quantity surveying. Step number two is that you can gain practical experience. This can be done through shadowing a QS on your project. So usually you already work with the QS, depending on, obviously on how big your project is. But if you work for a big firm currently and you actually have QSs on site, you can then like shadow them, ask to be more involved or pulled in when it comes to their financial and contract administration duties they do need your input anyway most of the time but then you can then see how they do things and that will also start um, modifying your thinking as a civil engineer so yeah the best way to learn is to practically involve yourself and take on more duties that are QS related we can study and learn as much as possible but what really matters is the practical experience even for a QS we learn what we learn at school but as soon as we get to sites or a company things are done slightly differently we're always learning as QSs one thing that I know I think just anyone actually in any profession I think we're always learning there's always something new to learn there's always a different way to do something there's always something that's focused more over the other depending on the company so if you do have exposure go for it try to get that practical experience in um, involve yourself a bit more on sites and see what they do when they do their payment certs what do they look for um, also because you have a more in-depth technical experience this might make you sharper when it comes to picking up certain things or certain things that are being claimed that shouldn't be claimed from a civil engineering perspective but yeah the second way is to get that practical experience in step number three is that you can actually get certification and qualifications for um quantity surveying if you already have your honors in civil engineering i think it's possible to apply for a master's in quantity surveying you probably have all the credits that you need so you can do that if you want to solidify it and if this is the switch that you really want for your life i know there's also uh, courses at uh, wit university like a, you can do a, a diploma a postgraduate diploma in quantity surveying or any other qs related course you can do this if you have the funds and if you have the time and you have the backing for it you could also um, do an online course that doesn't even need pre-qualification like with get smarter something that's related to quantity surveying or construction management that will expose you to what qss usually do and then lastly workshops as well linkedin always has webinars that you can join some of them you have to pay some of them are free but in this way you can then solidify your transition into qsing by looking more into getting certification with them also you can now i know that civil engineers are part of exa you can now switch to um, the qs engineering bodies which is our which are rics and asaqs um, p <laughs> where does this acronym always get me um so you can look at more qs related bodies see what's required under them what i also like about joining a body like um, rscs or saqsp is that when you try to get accredited under them the rubric and the type of experience that you need is clearly stipulated so getting in those hours will then harness your skills um, and help you focus on what's required in order for you to become a well-rounded quantity surveyor so joining those bo bodies will be very very helpful when it comes to then sussing out um, what you need in order for you to be a fully fledged is it fledged or fledged i don't know fully fledged <laughs> quantity surveyor and also being registered with a professional body like that like rex or saqs or I IAQS which is an Australian one is that they open doors internationally this is why you get a lot of quantity surveyors moving around the world because these type of qualifications or this type of skill is very needed worldwide so yeah think about that and yeah that can open more doors for you step four you can then network and start job hunting this is obviously every step to switching jobs <laughs> uh, when it comes to life or a career in general attend um, qs related networking events 
have a business card where you're like aspiring to get where you're simply focusing on getting qs roles um update your linkedin with all the qs skills that you are now acquiring so that if recruiters or um yeah if recruiters are looking for someone with certain skills they can find you easily like uh, apply for assistance or cost engineer roles these are usually vague in the qualification that they're looking for they usually say qualification in quantity surveying or civil engineering they even say quantity surveying or related so yeah start applying or putting yourself out there as someone who does qs work many companies prefer hiring civil engineers with qs knowledge because they understand both the construction and financial management which is a great combination of skills to have so you're going to be like cream of the crop how to start without actually leaving your current role or job you can do this by starting or offering to handle cost related um, tasks in your current role this is how you find your notando and you say what are you doing or what estimation are you doing or if there's this, a variation on site that you are working on or you picked up that there's a change in design maybe you can start costing it and then do it with the qa so you guys can work together see how they do their rate analysis or benchmarking be involved in that so that you know finan the final financial aspects of the role i think that would be very helpful for you you can take online courses while you're working this doesn't need you to quit your job and then be jobless before you do the switch obviously and then you can also volunteer to assist with contract administration this could be maybe reviewing letters that a qs does especially if the letter or a change event is related to something that's technical which is your role so this can also help you with your um, contractual writing skills if the contract requires that type of um, uh, contract administration but yeah just be a bit more involved in it and expose yourself to getting that type of experience ah, so lastly can a civil engineer become a quantity surveyor absolutely yes 110 percent yes personally i don't understand why you would like to do that i remember having a conversation with my civil engineer friend who was like yeah yeah see the work that i'm doing at work is so curious related maybe i can switch into a qs and then she did another one where it was like very stressful <laughs> and then she was like maybe not because like why am i fighting for money with people like why am i always fighting every single month so depending on your your obviously things that you like what your passion is then 110 percent you can switch qsing is very malleable like anyone can do it with the right qualification with the right exposure you just need construction experience and you can become a qs um, and the skills are very you you can learn them they're very practical you can learn them on the job you can absorb them on the job you can you know yeah so definitely a civil engineer can become a quantity surveyor and if you are a civil engineer who's transitioned into quantity surveying please comment down below and let me know how your journey has been are you liking it would you rather be a civil engineer again um what actually motivated you to like switch into um quantity surveying because um, i don't know what well <laughs> i just feel like you have to wear so many hats when you're like a qs so it's always interesting to me when I see comments that are like, oh, can I switch to QSing? I'm a civil engineer. I want to be in QSing. My initial question is usually like, why? What about it has appealed to you? So yeah, so if you are a civil engineer that has switched into quantity surveying, please do answer that one question for me because I'm very curious. Yeah, so yeah. Anyway, if you found this video useful, please do let me know. Please do like the video, share it with somebody who's had the same questions. And if you're considering a career change, let me know in the comments and also let me know why you want to <laughs> switch. Yeah, thank you so much for watching this video till this far. Please don't forget to like the video and actually comment and let me know how you feel about the video. It's so um, encouraging when I see all your comments and your discussions below. And sometimes I see people having a conversation amongst each other. It makes me feel like what i'm doing is worth it yeah thank you so much for watching see you later in another video don't forget to like share and subscribe Mwah.